Good evening, everyone. All protocols are established this evening. So I'm going to present today on literacy and schooling, but with a focus on interactive read aloud sessions and what part Rotary can play in these read aloud sessions. And basically it deals with interaction. The objectives today really would be to identify some strategies for Interact Read Aloud for the other clubs and for Rotary uh, members as well, if they would like to try the Interactive Read Aloud, understand the benefits of it, analyze current reading practices in your country, in Trinidad and Tobago and other islands, Caribbean islands, and discuss with your club and plan perhaps Interactive Read Aloud projects. This semester this year we are going to look at the project from this angle read to serve and change lives so every year we change the um focus but it's still about read aloud in terms of the theme of rotary international now before i move on i just have to say you know i i had a discussion and you know i really had to just present at one meeting to the point 14 club, Rotary Club of Trinidad and Tobago. So I don't know how I ended up here, but I hope that I, you know, uh, meet all your expectations. I will try my best. Um, if I air well, we all will learn from it. And before I move on, I want to give you a little glimpse. Let's go, mem go down memory lane into interactive read aloud. A short story as a prelude our moving forward with today's presentation. A flashback in the form of a story of our club's Interact Read Aloud sessions. Based on data-driven research, empirical evidence, Read Aloud, the Pearls Report, as well as Rotary's importance on basic education and literacy. And of course, then we had COVID-19. We decided to pursue online read aloud activities in several schools, three schools to be exact. So when I approached principal, teachers, even parents, they were very eager. Although some staff or some, you know, parents wondered, how would this read aloud, you know, um, really take fusion? What form? Because they are custom when they do read aloud. One, many times it's not interactive and two, it's face-to-face. -face. So how would online work? More so interactive, you know, well, interactive read aloud online. And I remember inviting um, very early A.G. Jalim to one of the early read aloud sessions. After explaining what I was going to do, he looked a bit perturbed, I must admit, but nevertheless supported me 100%. Months after today, well, I still have his support. Evident, you know, he's here today. And he supported me throughout, attended many. My club as well, I always had their unyielding support on flagging confidence in terms of the read aloud sessions. And that was very, very important. The moral support, the support, the collaboration and the team spirit for me to move forward, you know, um, with the team in terms of these read aloud sessions. So the read aloud was very fulfilling. It had a multiplicity of benefits, which we will look at and some of the strategies we used. Of course, there were challenges, but we overcame those challenges and rose to the occasion. And when, when if I have to reminisce and reflect on the read aloud uh, based on the experience of the three schools that we did, four sessions every single week, I would say, that we help students to come out of their shells. We give them agency and voice. We model compassion and empathy, which was evident in many, many of the stories, local, um, foreign, a combination, information type stories, fiction, all different types. And you know, and the, the, the boys totally enjoyed um, the nonfiction, they also enjoyed when I spoke about animals and, you know, airplanes and hot air balloons. And, and, and if I think about Ginger the Giraffe's strength in one of the story and determination to help others find a safe home, think about the compassion the students were able to understand, compassion and empathy from others 
or the bravery of the amazing and visible tiger or the love of Jimmy's mother in Jimmy's first day of school when he was so scared or peace week in Miss Fox's class where Miss Fox promoted peace. And we had our past AG, Debbie, doing that. And it was wonderful. And there's a project that would be coming out of it and a mural. And we'll talk more about that. Indeed, reading aloud, interactive reading, pr promoted what Harper Lee noted is a great quality in anyone in the novel To Kill a Mockingbird. You never really understand the person, and I quote, until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb in his skin and walk around it. And that is exactly what many of these students did. And we have a teacher here today, and she will give you her journey as we go along in the presentation. So the Read Aloud allowed students, as Rebecca Bellingham posited, to look, you know, up, to look up from their phones. The parents told me this all the time, continuously, and they were so grateful. Their screens, their devices, and computers, and to connect, except, you know, when we had the online, to connect with each other, even online, to become collaborative with each other. And that was very, very critical, to expose them to others, you know, to, to the world of others, even if vicariously to consider different points of views. So even I, you know, as, as, as I move on from, from this story, I was a bit concerned with connectivity issues. I remember the principal asking, are we having read aloud today? Do you think students would come on? And, you know, after the first session, every single read aloud, we had 100% participation, most times. Everyone was amazed that all the students were always happy. And I remember leaving one of the read alouds, uh, one of the interactive read alouds, and one of the students um, put up their hands and the students said, Miss, you know, I, I really, really enjoy these sessions, but guess what? My mom and dad enjoy it more. So read aloud is not just for an age, it's, it's right through, it's beneficial throughout. You know, and, and as an introduction as well to literacy, I want to ask you, the audience, everyone present here, you know, to think about your favorite memory of school, to reflect on, you know, when you did a memorable project in reading or your experience of reading as a child, whether it's negative or positive. And at the end of today's session, if we have two or three minutes, some of you can share, but I would like you because it's going to link with what I'm going to see here today, and I'm sure it would. So, so think about it, your favorite memory and reflecting on doing a memorable project in reading. So right now we would have Rotarian Imtiaz. And if you know the song, Dan is the man in the van by the mighty Sparrow, I would ask all of you to sing along because I think he really might need the help. Okay, so um, Imtiaz, Rotarian Imtiaz. Thank you very much, Dr. Harry. You know, I had a simple thing to do, you know, but until 10 o'clock last night, my beloved Vice President Nisha dropped this on me. But nevertheless, we will do it. I know everybody will know it. And my friend, Ken Buru, I know you will help me. So let's try this. I ain't not got something in this time. Uh -huh. Jack Satan, but come on. According to the education you get, you will grow up with true ambition and respect. But in my case, in school, they teach me like a fool. Take the 
Thank you so much, Rotary and MTS. Um, and you know, you would think, you would think, you know, that's a song, um, Dan is the Man in the Van, the title of a 1963 Calvin song from the Mighty Sparrow, right? So on the first, um, when you first listen, you might find yourself asking, what silly nursery rhyme stuff, you know, is Sparrow singing about? But really, there's on deeper examination, one realizes the extent of the social commentary in the song. Sparrow is singing about the education system in Trinidad then, and indeed the entire Caribbean at the time. Most of the nursery rhymes listed he's talking about and the content of the curriculum came from, you know, um, abroad. It was more Eurocentric. And even in the method of teaching, it was more traditional where you had that talk and show, where students didn't have a voice, where students didn't have an agency. And if we were to think about the curriculum in those days and you're doing reading, it was reading to just get the correct answer. You know, so it was a colonial type curriculum. And he was, you know, then so brilliant, you know, so that progression, we're moving away from that type of perennialist philosophy to a more progressivist philosophy, where you would see interactive read-alouds become alive, a more student-centered approach to learning and also with indigenous material in terms of even the stories that we're going to give and, and to the students. So very, very important um, as what I just said. And if we look, and I, I look in at the national philosophy of education in Trinidad and Tobago, 1993-2003. And from the, based on the other islands, you would have your own national philosophy. But I think the essence would be the same. You know that every child has an inherent right to an education that would expose them to their maximum capability regardless of their gender, economic status, background, ethnicity. You know, every child, you have to have that belief, can learn. You know, every child, and you must build on that, that, that positive assumption. And every child has a right to an education. You know, it's not about sorting children and selecting those you, you deem um, could, or could make it. You have to try. And one way is to enhance and to improve the literacy level of children. And it starts with reading. It starts with reading different forms of literacy, writing, reading, speaking, listening, different skills. And of course, reading encompasses all. So, you know, you have to, to for, for us to have an interactive classroom in terms of the interactive read aloud, we have to shift from that traditional paradigm that is embedded in perennialist type of philosophy where you have rules, no interaction. It's as if what you're doing, you're just brewing out children to be the same. You know, you're not looking at student at the heart of teaching and learning. You're really looking at a piece of paper or for them to pass exam or tests and you're just training the rational mind rather than the students. So, so there's no thinking. They're reading to give the answers, but no thinking about it. You know, no thinking allowed in that kind of system that Sparrow was talking about. 
And this is just a short clip I want to share with you because it also relates to the interactive read aloud and what happens and the movement because we still have schools that, that are totally in that traditional paradigm. You know, we, we in the Caribbean have three major high stake tests. So tell me about that, what happens? You know, and when we want interaction, sometimes even um, academic, academic staff, the principal, vice principal, sometimes they don't want to hear a pin drop in a class. How can that be? We, you know, you want interaction, you want students to learn. And so this is a very short clip. Um, and you know, I, I would have liked to engage you with what is happening in all these clips, but you know, um, we, we, we can do so at the end. Um, we can spell difficulty. You couldn't spell difficulty if your life depended on it. She taught us with a poem. A poem, how sweet. What poem would that be? Mrs. D, Mrs. I. Mrs. F, F, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. U, Mrs. L, T, Y. Why are all these women married? Mrs. D, Mrs. I, you're supposed to be teaching spelling, not poetry. Can't for the life of me understand why small children take so long to grow up. I think they do it deliberately just to annoy me. Funny. Hmm? Come on, spit it out. Speak up. I like a joke as well as the next fat person. Ah, it's a snake. It's a snake. Ah, it's a snake. Ah. One of you tried to poison me. Who? Oh. I just thought you'd like to know it smells snake. It's a newt. What did you say? It's a newt, Miss Trunchbull. Stand up, you villainous sack of goat slime. You did this. No, Miss Trunchbull. Did you act alone? Or did you have accomplices? I didn't do it. You didn't like the choke, eh, did you? Thought you'd pay me back, didn't you? Well, I'll pay you back, young lady. For what, Miss Trunchbull? For this newt, you pissworm! I'm telling you, I didn't do it! Besides, even if you didn't do it, I'm going to punish you. Because I'm big and you're small. And I'm right and you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're a liar and a scoundrel. And your father's a liar and a cheat. You're the most corrupt lowlifes in the history of civilization. Am I wrong? I'm never wrong. In this classroom, in this school, I am God! Um, that was a little clip from Matilda, and it showed the type of classroom that sometimes children, you know, have to really exist in and how difficult it could be. And, you know, she spoke about poetry, didn't want to, didn't want to expose the children to poetry. If you looked at some of the writings on the wall, you would see, you know, the teacher is in, is, is in lead, you know, um, the teacher is in control, the students don't have a voice. And of course, read aloud and interaction would not play a part there, or even the integration of the language arts, you know, where you have reading, comprehension, speaking, writing, integrated. And we all remember the Nelson's West Indian reader, you know, and sometimes you might have good memories or bad memories. You know, it, it's a good book, but I remember, you know, you just had to learn and, and then recite. You just had to read and they're testing you on that reading. It was not about fun. It was not about, um, you know, really telling the story and exposing you to the vocabulary and having a discussion um, and how that related to my experience, 
you know, and, and it, it, it was that kind of upbringing, you know, um, that made you really, really wonder, you know, did you really like to read? Some students, they get turned off, you know, and you have to make reading really, really wonderful for children because it's the bedrock of everything else. You know, they know to read, they can do physics, they can do maths, they can do every single subject. And then of course, we have in Trinidad, the Republic Reader, where you have Boyo and Carla that we are familiar with. And I have seen teachers reading this aloud and it's also based on our context. Very, very important when you're choosing books as well for, for your read alouds. So literacy then is not just, you know, reading and writing. It means being critical, creative users, not just of the spoken language, but of print. You know, also, it's very important for them to, 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 to really be able to deconstruct and analyze visual language of film and television. Because sometimes even in cricket, you see an angle, you know, and you look at that angle and then you have the commentary and they tell you, you know, um, Trinidad, um, you know, played foul against, let's say, England. And you have to look at it. If you change the image, and you look at it from a different angle, you might be able to, to critique it constructively. It may not be what the commentators see. And that is being critical. And that is understanding how to deconstruct visual language as well, not taking it at face value. And so read aloud, interactive read, read aloud would play a major, major part in promoting 21st century skills, critical and for students to become critical and creative readers. And also, you know, in terms of communicating in society, social relationships, social skills, very important, all right? It, it's very important, you know, that literacy also takes many forms, as I said, you know, you have financial, you have computer, you know, you have different types of literacies as well. And this is from UNESCO, United Nations Literacy Decade, 2003. So one way of addressing students' literacy is by teaching the skills of listening, speaking, reading, writing in an explicit manner, all right? So the goal of literacy instruction then is to improve learning by building students' comprehension as well and their communication skills. And an interactive read aloud um, has a major and critical role to play in enhancing students' literacy skills, all right? And what you would ask is this interactive read aloud about you know fisher at all lennox wiseman all of them they for them interactive read alouds and that's that's the that's the um the the example i would have taken when i did the read aloud it emphasizes active so you move from a kind of classroom where the teacher alone talks to where there's active participation the students are no longer passive but they are active they participate in the read aloud experience. It's an experience. You know, when, when we say curriculum is enacted, it's enacted, for it to be enacted, you must have that experience of the students as well. It cannot just be the teacher, all right? Pontes and Pinel also describe interactive read alouds. It's deliberate, which is how we would have done it at um, the Rotary Club of Felicity Charlieville, an explicit, instructional activities that involve, you know, when teacher models certain vocabulary development, vocabulary and context as you read along. So it's reading, yes, you enjoy, but it's highly interactive, you know, reading, understanding vocabulary, building vocabulary, asking questions so students could respond. A lot of discussion and interaction involved, right? Allowing opportunities for students to share their view, their experiences, and even providing that background that they may not have experience through the books and they may not have experience in their real life as well. So a typical read aloud session then consists of, you know, um, a, a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, a lot of written and artistic response. So I'm just giving you an insight into how, you know, some of the strategies, you know, um, according to Fisher, Floodlap and Fred, they identified several characteristics of interactive read alouds. You know, and there are many. I am just giving you just but a few versions of it. You know, you can adapt it to suit your own context, you know, because a school in point 14 may have different needs. Read aloud, interactive, read aloud, yes. 
but they may have different needs for a school, you know, that is in, in Shogona, so Port of Spain. But, you know, strategies based on best practice, best international practice, and data-driven research, of course, you know, and, and based on our experience of doing the read aloud, not in one school, but in three schools, for, um, since last year, March 2020, till now, we are still continuing. Um, these, these are really some of the characteristics, you know, you, you, you have books that are chosen appropriate for their interests, for their age level, you have to look at the language, um, the selection, really you have to look at it, you have to be able to understand cultural context, multicultural context, the words, and, and you know, be appropriate, very important for their age level. A clear purpose should be established for the read aloud. And of course, whoever is doing the read aloud must, must model fluent reading, you know, proper phonics and so on. And of course, the teacher is going to be dramatic, animated, use expression, um, you know, have, create through their own nonverbal, a beautiful, welcoming climate for the students. All right, and of course, teacher, teacher initiated questions that do not harm students, that do not scare students, but invite them to participate. You know, and we had a lot of um, Rotarians and teachers doing just that after training. All right, so it was threefold, the literacy, the interactive read aloud training of Rotarians and teachers, as well as we did creative writing. But today we focus on the read aloud. And of course, based on these read aloud sessions, um, I, I always check back with the schools and the teachers and the parents. And you know, the parents are so happy that some of the students doing further reading, whereas they were not doing that before. They even read into them, you know, and vice versa. So it happens in the home now. So the classroom, we have to ask ourselves now, you know, in, in, in 21st century, and especially, as I say, COVID, but inequities and challenges, but so, so many opportunities. We have to ask ourselves now, where is the classroom? Because the classroom is not just a physical place. You know, yes, it used to be outside by the trees in the classroom, but it's online, it's in your home. The classroom is everywhere learning takes place on a field trip, a virtual field trip. Very, very important. All right, so, you know, we have variations while that, I, I, as I just noted, we emphasize different features. What, what happens, the teacher or the reader plays a very important role, right, in making conversations and discussions. All right, this, you know, different, different avenues to bring that to the fore so that interaction will be promoted, students would feel comfortable, and they would feel that their potential, their full potential is being realized, even in a read aloud, because when you do a read aloud, you're doing writing, you're doing projects, you're, you have active listening, every single skill you can think about. A read aloud in the United States, a recent study, to read or not to read, and, and, and what they found of the National Endowment of the Arts, they found that Americans, especially younger Americans, they, that, that's their study, all right? Um, they found that they read less. And when they did their study, what happened is that they, 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 they linked it, you know, based on, on, on this specific study with reading, the poor reading skills correlated with lack of employment, low wages, and fewer opportunities for advancement. Our own, Pearl report, you know, um, Trinidad and Tobago. And we participated um, in a literacy study and it happens every five years, all right, in 2011 and 2016 and we are due for one now. So it's progress in international reading literacy level. And it's an international comparative assessment. All the countries would have it. And uh, you could go on Google and you would find the report. It measures students learning and reading. And the study is conducted every five years, all right? In Trinidad and Tobago, I looked at Trinidad and Tobago at this point, they were, but holistically, there were 49 countries in the study. And Trinidad and Tobago did show some improvement um, of 479 in 2016 from 471 in 2011 um, and 436 in 2006. And I'll explain what that means, all right? What happened is that, um, you know, the, the international benchmark 
for reading for average is 500 points. So Dr. Paulson Scarrett from the University of the West Indies, my colleague, um, when he looked at the report and he analyzed it, he posited that still the country, Trinidad and Tobago, remains below the international average of 500 points. 80% of the students, according to Dr. Paulson, were below the international benchmark of 400. This meant, according to Dr. Paulson, that the country did not manage properly during those periods to educate our students to a basic level of reading. So can you imagine? You know, um, and, 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 and I could make this available because we have 49 countries in there. And, and it's against this background as well, you know. Um, one of the strategies that emerged would be interactive read aloud, all right? Because it, and, and, and when we looked at it, when we did our read aloud, we balanced fiction and nonfiction. Also uh, material that boys and girls would like, not just girls and you expose the students to language forms and structures of many different genres and different types. And this, is, this is reinforced by Linda Hoyt, author of Interactive Read Alouds. Very, very important. And I spoke about many benefits. You know, it promotes critical thinking, um, a, a sense of community, you know, motivates students to read more, all right? So read aloud books really, really builds community. It builds community. Now it's building even further with three clubs, with three schools, and our club. You know, I've even spoke. I spoke to clubs um, in other um, areas in the Caribbean, other regions as well, um, who are interested in learning the strategies of the actual interactive read aloud and making that a part of the curriculum every day or every week. Very, very important. Demonstrate the craft of writing and rich vocabulary. And, you know, very, very important to, to, to push students further to read more on their own eventually. All right, according to um, Remnack and Wadsworth. So, <clears throat> the 1985 report, Becoming a Nation of Readers, what they found was that read aloud was, in, was very important in building not just knowledge for future success, but after 20 years following this report, becoming a nation, research still, still concur that read alouds are beneficial, not just for lower school, not just for early childhood, but for children of all ages. And of course, the literacy consultant, um, Rutman, he, 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 he felt that reading aloud enables children to hear the rich language of stories that they cannot even read on their own. We all read, you know, we, we were read too as children, as babies before we were even born. And we all believe in it, how important it is. You know, reading aloud to students, they learn new vocabulary, grammar, information. I remember taking one, one child and even a Rotarian in our club, Diana, and he, 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 he read very slow. He paused at every word. By the time she was finished, he was very, very fluent, you know, and understood what he was reading. There are many challenges, you know, but you read aloud helps. Sometimes students read but they, not, they do not necessarily always understand what they're reading. That discussion and that interaction can help them with that. And so, so, so much more. You know, and Allentown is very important. He's an advocate for, you know, um, literacy. And, and he provided, you know, in terms of all his research studies, 10 essential principles of balanced reading program. One of which would be daily read alouds from various genres and creating opportunities for them to further. All right, so it has been accepted in many classrooms. And of course, it's very important for the, for the teacher, whoever is reading, to model fluency, help with background knowledge, and develop language acquisition. When you do a read aloud session, it's extremely important to prepare before reading. And I, and I, I gave a synopsis of that in terms of choosing the book appropriate, choosing the material culturally appropriate and so on. You know, even what is your purpose? You know, what are you really going to accomplish with this read aloud? You could even choose what skills you're going to build on. During reading, of course, responding while reading, thinking about, asking the students to think about what is happening and discussing. It's a lot of patience, 
It's a lot of time, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. It's not just you, and, and this is not about a one time event. It's not about a cookie cutter recipe for everybody, but it's about continuous and ongoing work, ongoing read aloud. It must be consistent. And then of course, after reading, when you leave the classroom, that's it? No, you must have extension projects that would emerge and emanate from all the read alouds, but in tandem with the curriculum at that, you know, in the school. And that's what I looked at. I looked at the curriculum. I looked at the skills. You know, I looked at what UNESCO wanted in terms of, of, of literacy and read aloud. What, what, what the school curriculum, what, the, what, what was the philosophy of the country? And all, be, all you mesh you know, and all were in tandem. And then when you read the book, you think about all that, but you bring that to the students. Very, very important. And the teachers would have, you know, a lot of that. So I just wanted to stress in terms of a mentor test, text, you know, one that could boost development besides culturally appropriate and age appropriate. It promotes active listening, encourages deep thinking and supports learning more about the world. All right, so you, they end up with a moral, they end up with, you know, understanding, compassion better and empathy, of course. All right, and I can go on and on, right, about um, interactive strategies, you know, um, a lot of listening for words and phrases. So, so, you know, some students really, you know, get difficulty with it in, in terms of even the gifted. Very important for read aloud as well, because sometimes they read aloud and they just understand, but they don't go to the depth of thinking. Then, then you would challenge them to think deeper, to, to make predictions, to, to actually make connections and transfer learning from one to the next, make, con make connections with all the different subject areas. You know, very, very important. And, and so, you know, we, we connect, we predict, in, in read aloud, you question, you monitor, you clarify, summarize, synthesize, even evaluate. All right, some of the reading strategies. And, and you know, I just want you want to share um, Anderson, Scott and Wilkinson's view that children who are read to are usually the very best readers in a classroom, according to him, and a lot from my experience, but we have good readers as well, you know, once, once reading is done in all realms and they acquire large vocabularies, they write well and they do better in subject areas as well. Very important. They build a lot of background knowledge, you know, you expose students to more. Um, and even, you know, when, when, when I looked at this TEDx talk, um, it was so wonderful and I, I, I would ask you to look at it. You know, she didn't focus solely on read aloud, and her name is Keisha Silru. And she didn't focus totally on um, read aloud, but she talked about literacy and the importance of reading, you know, and she was asking, how do we prepare students to thrive in the future? You know, what skills would students need in 2030? It might seem strange, it might seem, well, what do we want to know what is happening in 2030? But we need to know. We need to know the best practice to help students to thrive you know, the best assumption of what education is going to look like and what competencies and skills students need to have, you know, and, and, and the World Economic Forum, you know, talked about 21st century skills, critical, creative, global competencies, problem solving, um, being compassionate, empathetic, and all those happen if you experience a read, interactive read aloud session. Very, very important, wonderful TEDx talk, you know, and, and there are many implications of the read aloud, many implications, critical, critical, not just being critical thinking, but critical literacy is at play, you know, when you look at it, and when we did one of the books, and we'll come to it, um, you know the story, just, just as simple, you might think it's silly, but the, the three little pigs, did you know there was a version, the true story of the three little pigs? So, so, so what is happening there is critical literacy at play. You know, two versions, two points of view. Who do you think would be correct? And the students had various points of view, various ways in which they came to the analysis and all correct. Some agree with the wolf, some took his side, some took the side of the pigs. You know, the same story told from different perspectives. 
critical literacy happening right there in front, first year, second year, and they were able to do it. You know, you consider the gaps, the silences, the absence, you know, the purpose, you know, wh why is this one, you know, one perspective and not the other. So critical literacy then, you know, even, even if we look at our, our novel, and when I do presentations like this, I like to use our indigenous resources, whether it's in the form of Calypso, music, literature, uh, Merle Hodge for the life of Letitia. And Letitia was a, you know, um, very, very determined um, not to succumb, not to succumb to that traditional system or where the teacher would tell her that she's not right, you know, and in, in one of the sessions in the class, in the book, in the novel fiction for the life of Letitia, um, the teacher was telling Letitia that a, 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 a good family, a happy family could only be a nuclear family. A family is not a family unless it, unless it is a nuclear family. All other families are broken and unhappy. And, and you know, critical literacy was at play because Letitia was able to decipher what the teacher was saying and say, no, that cannot be, I'm not accepting your word, you know? And for her then, her family was a happy family, but it was not a nuclear family. It consisted of her ma, her papi, her uncle Leroy, her mommy, papi, you know, tante Monica and so on. So critical literacy, very important. And you see the true story of the three little pigs and A.G. Jalim did indeed attend. One of this, the, one of my first read alouds at El Dorado South, you know, and um, this is the, the, this 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 is you know a story that really really unearthed so many different points of views, and you know you 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 saw um, creativity. Students were able, you know, to to bring their own perspective, and even I don't even think I, I don't know if you all know the story. We know about Cinderella, right? But there's a Caribbean version to it. Right, send drill on. And it's told, it's told from the perspective, and I would like you all to go and read up on it a little bit, from the perspective of the God Mother. All right, our own version. And it's important, it's important to bring in, you know, um, your cultural resources as well, so that the students can identify with what is happening. You know, so in the in the story of the true little pigs, you know, what did they believe? What is their point of view? You know, and they, they were even given to write, Dear Alexander Wolf, my name is, and they, they, they told him as it is. You know, did they believe his perspective or not? You know, of course, it built a lot of vocabulary as all the other books, um, you know, prediction and so on. Very important what a read aloud would do in terms of positive implications. It unearths very, very beautifully the hidden curriculum. The peace story that past A.G. Debbie read did that beautifully. And the students were able, you know, to tell her situations where they, they were in conflict and how they approached it and what they did. You know, every story, whether it's about bravery, whether it's about um, kindness, there's a hidden curriculum, you know, very, very important. Or the case of the missing smile. And at this point, I will just ask Diana, um, to just read, model reading, two pages of the case of the missing smile. Very important in terms of moral, moral purpose. Just two pages. Um, so she's not going to share. She's just going to um, read. She's not going to share the screen. But we can see her beautiful face. Diana. Good evening, okay. everyone. You all hearing me? Yes, we yes. are. Okay, so today I'll be reading um, read a loud version of The Case of the Missing Smile. And that is the detective there. The Case of the Missing Smile by T. Silver. The Case of the Missing Smile is about a little girl who lost her smile, not because she was unhappy, but because she was afraid of losing a friend, the Tooth Fairy. Now this looks like a very interesting case, Detective Peterson said aloud as she reviewed the huge stack of reports at her desk. I think I will handle this one myself. After several minutes of searching through the official tooth fairy records, she found what she was looking for, a folder with the name 
Sophia Sue Simmons. Thank you, Rotary and Diana. Beautiful. So, so the Rotarians took part as well, many teachers, teachers as well. And so we got the whole community to take part. Very, very important. So, so you know, what culminates? What culminates? You have projects, many, many projects. You know, I couldn't get all, so I tried to do a collage. I mean, you know, it's not the best collage, but you had drawings and so on. And the teacher Nandini would talk about some of these. You know, um, then the students were eager, as you see, they are all present, interactive online sessions. You know, um, you, you, you see Ryan Price, he never missed a session and he did many, many projects as well as Samira Ablak, among other students. You know, all this culminated from those read aloud sessions. And, you know, you also had the integration of the language arts, interdisciplinary, very important, bringing all the skills together in a read aloud, you know? And, and so you have that tight rope because it's integrated. You know, we, we, we try to um, put things in segments and separate it but everything is linked and it's very, very important for that to happen. And so what was, what major implications? 21st century skills, you had critical thinking, communication, creativity, citizenship, you know, everything happens once it's planned and systematic and, you know, it's ongoing and it is consistent. Um, my club, uh, the Rotary Club of Felicity, Charlieville, our literacy project, because of them, um, you know, it came to fruition. And I want to thank them dearly. All our members are here. And, you know, if, if we can, um, in this presentation, um, I take my hats off to them and give them a round of applause. It, you know, I mean, in their own way, they may only hear my applause. But thank you for believing in the project. And thank you for standing with me and with the team and with the teachers in this project. And so, um, as I said, the pandemic brought this. So it was against this backdrop that we took up the gauntlet to provide the online read aloud sessions. You know, it, it, it began March, 2020 with the pandemic. And of course we had creative writing sessions, interactive read aloud and training for teachers and Rotarians. Three schools, um, Eldorado North, Eldorado South, Felicity Presbyterian, because we wanted you know, to promote what full and term deeper leaning, which is, um, you know, consistent with um, improving the literacy level. Of course, it was a lot of, a lot of sessions, a lot of work, but we did it. You know, met four sessions for read aloud, three different schools, creative writing sessions, and um, for, for all the schools as well. We completed 18 read aloud books with discussion, with interaction, and with many, many projects after. It never stopped because when, when the teachers were trained, they continue it. And we will hear a little bit about that, you know, um, shortly. And I'll just to give you a little snippet, it's just a minute, bear with me. Um, Three. 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 Houses. Houses. Good. Anything else? And the children. And the children. Very good. You so, you know, highly interactive. They're online and, and very important. Three. Three. And this one, just a little snippet. Okay, that does it, says Miss Fox. We're having a peace week. Mouse piped up. What's Peace Week, Miss Fox? Well, for one thing, Miss Fox replied, no more squabbling for one whole week. Frog said, what else, Miss Fox? Miss Fox sat on the edge. Thank you. So such a beautiful voice. When, um, when, when the read, read aloud was finished, um, they said, you know, um, pass A.G. Debbie, uh, really promoted peace. Her voice is peace, you know, and um, the project would continue. And, oh, sorry about the that. Oh. Okay. And, and some other books, you know, um, culturally appropriate as well, um, with language, you know, Quickest Kid in Clarksville and Morning with Grandpa, you know, um, Ganeshi Sweet Tooth, Looking for Bongo, 
monsoon afternoon, you know, and you can make, you can build, you know, based on your, your context, where your school is, what is the need, you know, what the students like, what the teachers like, yeah, right? Um, and now um, I would ask the teacher, Nandi, to share her screen. This is where I would stop sharing and she would give you an insight into the Interactive Read Aloud project from the principal teacher student's perspective. So I would stop okay, sharing. Okay, um, thank you, Dr. Harry. Um, I'd like if you can uh, co-host Ms. Melissa Bagu because she will be sharing the screen and um, she will be presenting the uh, PowerPoint. Um, if before she does that though, while you're um, co-hosting her, I would just like to, um, to say that, you know, uh, the Read Aloud project was something that we really, and I mean truly um, enjoyed. And it was something that as soon as you had said, as soon as Dr. Harry had said in the first um, session, she said, you know, to our principal, she said, you know, I would love for the children to do a project in that, on that very same afternoon, I started working on getting the children to do a project because I myself was blown away and couldn't wait. So I, and you showed uh, Ryan's project. So this is what a project book looked like, right? Um, parents went overboard, right? And uh, for every, um, every story that we did, we, as you would say, plan before, right? So that the story and the purpose of the story and the activities that came out of the story meshed with the curriculum as well, right? And everything that we did, um, we, we put a trust in creative writing and our first year students at the end of first year, they were able to write more than two pages. I mean, like, you know, infant pages of writing for me at uh, for, for, the, for the end of term evaluation, right? I still have on the board. For um, the, the two three as white as snow, um, you know, they were able to add an adjective to every noun that they were using. So, like, so for instance, on the board, instead of just having um, they had them their rod, they, they had they had their new rod and a bucket filled with ye bait instead of just bait, right? And uh, we were also, you know very much involved every time we had to do something. Um, we would plan way ahead. We each took, that's Miss Gita, Miss Melissa and I took a week when you all stepped off. We, we took a week for um, read aloud and we were able to do the two sessions with the children doing the activities and so on. So Miss Melissa, um, you can share with us, you can share the poem now. PowerPoint. And this is just a of what we've done. Which Melissa, the, which Melissa is this? You got, you got, okay. Um, yeah. Ms. Babu, or she, she's there. Um, okay.
a sample of the children's work and handwriting. Yes. Yes. That's a bit of our project and what it looked like. I managed to do 21 stories um, over the period of time that um, from the time that we started on the 23rd of February to um, maybe about three weeks before school um, ended. We did 21 stories and story we tried to do as many as many activities that we could have with them. Um, some orally and some that we put in the project. And um, it was a wonderful experience and it's something we are not going to stop. Uh, we're going to continue with Read Aloud with the new intake. And as these children move up to second year, Read Aloud is going to continue with them as well. So back to you, Dr. Harry. Is there anything else that um, we should elaborate on? That's fine, excellent, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So at this point, um, I would just like to call on um, Ramona to um, just share a read aloud poem quickly. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Reading Aloud by Amy Ludwig van der Water. The voice in my head when I read to myself is a mix of my mom and a teacher who knew that reading aloud glues people together. I have a book. May I read it with you? For if we share words the way people break bread, your voice will join in when I read in my head. The end. And very good. And thank you so much, um, by Ludwig. Um, this reflected some of the sentiments that the students would have actually spoken to me about, you know, and all the parents on their behalf. And this is an actual poem written by um, V. Sinat, a student, in terms of his journey to finding his voice, in terms of the read aloud. And it's going to be represented by RI Convention Promotions Chair, P.P. Kenneth Budu. The journey to finding my voice. I never knew the power of continuous read alouds. Oh, how I treasured those mornings when Rotary would do read aloud with my class. I tell you, there is so much power in read alouds. It gave me my voice and so much more. During COVID-19, we had online schooling. Read alouds were my joy and my peace. Oh, how excited I was to have those sessions every week. I became more courageous and came out of my shell. I tell you, there is so much power in read alouds. It gave me my voice and so much more. I was allowed to share my view. I was allowed to speak and be praised. Oh, how good I felt. I wanted to say thank you. I no longer just read words, but also understood what the writer meant. And it was cool that I was allowed to give my perspective to. I used my voice and it felt so good. I used my voice and many admired me. 
how can I express what the read alouds meant to me? It gave me my life skill and my voice mattered. I built a vocabulary bank and I wrote better sentences and then paragraphs. I tell you, there is so much power in read alouds. It gave me my voice and so much more. It gave me my voice and so much more. Thank you, Rotary. Thank you for giving me a lifeline. Wow, what wonderful reading. We know we're going to do the next read aloud, right? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> very, very wonderful. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, as we conclude, you know, I just want to tell you that very important, um, there's an interplay with education, literacy, literacy and education, literacy and interactive read aloud. Remember always that education is a fundamental read, human right, not an education that stifles um, students, that instills fear in them, but an education that really makes them feel that they matter and that they can have a say in things that matter to them. And it's very important, it's supported, you know, in terms of policy brief by United Nations in, 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 in country, all countries, you know, in terms of the fundamental right of education for children. And indeed, the children are our nation's best precious resources. And very important what the Read Aloud does, it doesn't teach you what to think, but students in terms of the student-centered approach should be taught how to think. Very important. And I leave you with this last, um, this last song. It's just very short, about a minute or two or less. Um, you know, really telling you how important education is. But when you think about the importance of education, think about what you could do to enhance the literacy levels of students, interactive read alouds, of course, and other, other um, strategies that would enhance students' literacy. Education, education, this is the foundation our rising population needs sound education to be recognized anywhere you go. You gotta have your certificate to show to enjoy any kind of happiness. Knowledge is the key to success. Children go to school and learn well. Otherwise, later on in life, you go get red Without an education in your head, your whole life will be pure misery. You better off dead. For there is simply no room in this whole wide world for an boy or girl Don't allow idle companions to lead you astray To earn tomorrow you got to learn today Thank you and well, any <laughs> questions, comments? So we're gonna ask Mr. Shedron to handle any questions that you have with Shedron uh, or, or oh, Olivia. Yeah, or just comments. <laughs> we have some questions, go ahead. You could, okay. Olivia or Shedron, go ahead. Um, yeah, so, Thank you again, Dr. Harry. I think Olivia is asking in terms of um, the method for delivery of the read aloud. If you want to share that with us as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, um, could you repeat the question? I was just the, taking off the... Not a problem. The method for delivery, um, is it one-to-one? -one? Is it a group? If you can just give us some insight right. in terms of what works. Right. So, um, really, it was a group, the entire class, um, a, a, a whole class discussion, but interact interactive. So what you did, what I did, I read aloud interactively and the teachers as well. It was not just me and other Rotarians. Um, everybody had their camera on, okay? You shared the book in terms of a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so they are visually seeing the book while you are reading. And while you are reading, the method would be, of course, as you are reading, you are asking questions, exactly what I presented. Um, I presented on that, all the strategies. You ask the questions as it come along. What are you going to focus on today? Do you want to focus on several skills? Do you want to focus on comprehension and vocabulary building? What do you want to focus on? So basically, um, that is what happened. Students would put up their hands or students would, um, the teachers would control what is happening in terms of when the students wanted to ask questions. And they responded as, we, we read along, we didn't just wait for the end. The discussion happened during the read aloud. So we would pause, the students would ask questions, we respond, they would respond to their views. And that, that's basically what happened, how we did the strategy. <laughs> Very great. And I had a couple of questions here myself. So, <laughs> um, a couple? I mean, no, there's a couple. <laughs> right? um, I mean, the, the whole online experience, especially for us Rotarians when delivering projects, is a completely, but sometimes a new one for us. So what kind of challenges you would have come across um, trying to deliver it online versus the usual face-to-face -face and really interaction with the kids? Um, well, well, of course, there were many positives that came out of the online. The challenges um, would be sometimes students in the more rural schools um, would have challenges linking on you know, getting on and they, they were eager to be in the read aloud session. So sometimes they would come in and, and, and go out and sometimes they would miss and they would ask. But of course we were able to rectify that because um, some students in one of the schools, we were able to help them with, with Wi-Fi and so on, you know, for that interconnectivity. Another challenge, another challenge would have been, sometimes we had, we had big classes, sometimes we had smaller classes. Um, what, and one of the challenges with the big classes would be that students, a lot of students wanted to interact, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. And so, um, but, but we, we, we got a system where the teachers knew the students. So they were able to help me so that the students' voices would be heard. And they were, they, at all time, every single student got a chance to talk. And, um, you know, if they wanted to discuss more, after the read aloud, that happened. Yeah. All right, great. And I think someone asked the question around, was it only done during school hours, out of school hours? And I, I, I guess I probably know the answer because there's no one size fits all, right? Um, yeah. Really, what works best for your community? So what has worked best for you? <laughs> well, for, for me, I worked with what the principal's parents and students wanted. So I, I was flexible. Our club was flexible. Um, so we... We worked with the, the principals, teachers, and students' parents within school hours. That's what they wanted, and that is what happened. So sometimes it would be a 9 a.m. Um, read aloud, or a 10 a.m., or a 1 p.m. read aloud. Those were the times. All right, great. And I think my last question, I mean, we, okay. we spoke a lot about the students, and I think the, the, the teachers getting involved. And I, I know someone had put in the chat, you know, parents are so integral as part of this. So what, can you give me an idea of what the role of the parents kind of fit into the project? Yeah, and um, Nandini would probably share as well um, a view on the parents, but I could tell you that they were there. I was, I taught students, well, I mean, the, 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 the team um, did interactive read aloud but it was not just the students. Every single parent <laughs> accompanied their students. They were eager, um, they, they promoted it. Um, they saw the difference after a month, we did it ongoing for a few months. And of course they supported fully. Great. I don't want to share anything from, from her school. <laughs> well, um, actually our parents, as, as Dr. Harry would have um, said before, uh, parents or 
whoever was supervising um, the child at the time, they were present so they knew exactly what was taking place. They encouraged actually the children to answer and so on. And when it was time for us to, to do the activities coming out of the project, right? Uh, the parents were the ones who were sitting with the children and ensuring that they were, they were doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, we, um, well, we made one day in April where we were able to, um, and it was, you know, the beginning stages of the project, but we were able to meet with the parents, right? Um, even though it was COVID and so on, we were still able to meet with them and view almost all of the projects, right? And, um, and we would have seen then the parents and their creativity because every project was different. And the only challenge that they had, they told me, it was a bit hard for them to keep up with the read aloud and all the activities that were coming out. So that's where we, um, we facilitated by having two or three um, activities per story instead of a whole host, you know, so that they would, would have been able to manage because, you know, some of them were working during the pandemic some of them were, were not able to, to get materials, things like that. So we tried to get uh, easy enough for them to handle. But our parents were very receptive and very, very supportive. Yeah. Uh, and I think it, uh, it just tells that for any project that you're delivering is to get all stakeholders involved, right? So, and as early as possible, so bring in the parents in from the planning and you're always competing for for eyes, because they also have school, they have other online activities, and now you're delivering another project online for them. And, and I guess hopefully when we get back to, to some state of normalcy, we, we can do some face-to-face -face, uh, read aloud programs. So, uh, Shadwell, Shadwell, let me interrupt, can I interrupt yeah. here? Um, Ms. Nandi or, Ms. or Dr. Harry, I, I would say about the parents here, what about parents who consider themselves not as bright as or less literate than their children, or some parents cannot read and write themselves? How do you work with that kind of, well, difference? Well, actually, at, um, well, at, at the okay, go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, so, well, what we did, remember, we were, we were, so what I did is I didn't, initially, what I've done, put on the classroom what the uh, child was supposed to do, right? Because we were now playing out what, what to do with the, with the project itself, right? And uh, parents might ask me, you know, on screen, Miss, you know, I didn't understand what was supposed to be done or this or that or the other. So what we decided to do was to do the activities with the children online. So if we were doing a creative writing piece, and as I said, we, um, we, we, we put a thrust in uh, the creative writing. So then I would go to my board, I would ask the questions, they would formulate the sentences, so on. I'd write the piece on the board, their sentences, helping them and so on. And they were able just to um, model that. And then I might leave just a little bit of homework. And those who couldn't, um, I would help them. So at the end of the session, at the end of the day, right, if somebody needed help for something or the other, they just wait back and then I would help them. Okay. Um, for, each, for each activity. So if it was vocabulary and the, and the parent didn't understand what it was I wanted them to do and so on, what we did, we started doing it with the children so that the parents didn't have that um, extra burden then to, to do something that they didn't understand. Okay. So that's how we facilitated as best as we could, you know, doing it with them as opposed to them just doing it on their own. Dr. Harry? Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> to talk on your behalf on the team because what happened is not just um we going in there but you also have the the support of the teachers and the principal you know so it's it's really a big collaborative team effort in terms of the online activities which you know really from the principal's point of um the principal in all three schools it really really um works successfully online 
<laughs> That's it. Chevron, any more? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's one question in terms of, I guess, how do you deal with the distraction of when you're reading aloud and <laughs> as, as, as a reader? I mean, that's to kind of prepare someone who's actually give, presenting that, um, presenting to the kids if they're not used to it. Well, 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 we didn't have that one. <laughs> um, we, it was interactive, so they understood that they can ask the question anytime. So you didn't have that distraction where they had to be silent, um, where, as I said earlier, not a sound. So while you're reading, um, you're asking questions and they're discussing and we're talking and we, we're going on like that, you know? So um, we didn't have that level of distraction at all where you know, you're online and you're reading and the students doing it. the students the students were really eager they were always um alert they answered immediately and sometimes they asked me questions you know so um so it was it was all about interaction and all about um that ongoing um back and forth discussion that was happening as well based on the read aloud Story. I think, Shadron, that question also begs, from a psychological perspective, there are people who, when they speak, hear themselves, and they do not like what they hear, especially when they either satirize, uh, or they do not, they cannot enunciate and pronounce it properly, so in hearing them make mistakes, that can deter them from reading aloud. So sometimes you have to, if there's such a student, you may have to help the student to appreciate their own sound and appreciate their voice because do remember prior to this there's heckling hey he can't talk hey look how she just talk squeaky squeaky so you are now from that backdrop of maybe some heckling have to stand up now and declare your voice so those are some things that may need to be addressed i don't know if they have had to, uh, to be addressed but i know from uh, my own experience you've i've had to address that kind of context, uh, especially if you work with children with, I, I work with children with learning disabilities. So people who may be dyslexic or have any kind of other kind of dyscalcia or whatever, you find that kind of issue. I mean, but normally you may not find that in a classroom, but there are such yeah. instances. Yeah. Great, and any final words? <laughs> final words, me, are you all, uh, <laughs> One <laughs> well, last question and a little literacy project. <laughs> Any final words? <laughs> um, to say thanks so much for um, you know the support for this meeting. It's an honor, and I hope we can do great things together in terms of. Yes, for sure. I, I I thought what I recognize tonight, even though you keep saying read aloud, I'm recognizing yeah. that the students are creating their stories. I didn't. Well, that's a part I, of the project. That's a part of what emanates oh, of, okay. the of the read aloud, because because you have that extension after. So okay, so we provide stories as well as they can eventually yeah, read those yeah, stories. Excellent. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot that emanates from it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't ask you to tap your your tables, Rotarians. I cannot. If you want to put on your mics and clap, or just wave, shake your hands. I, but let's really appreciate Dr. Harry and her team. And the, this, this, this was a great presentation. And I think it augurs well for us as clubs. And we are not selfish, even though tonight is the penal Felicity Charleville point 14 club joined together. I know 720, the people from, Kings, from uh, Jamaica, from Turks and Caicos, we are all in this as materials. Let's get going. If you need more information, let us know. You have our contact, and our contact is past district secretary Annie. Let's get together. Let's contact uh, Dr. Harry, and we are going forward. One question, though, Dr. Harry: Are we going to have to be trained? Is there a training program for us? Well, it depends on if you get teachers who can do the read-alouds, the educators. It all depends on the needs. Look at the needs and the assessment. Okay. So, well, there um, are teachers. Right? I think right. we have some point fourteen teachers on the platform tonight. And welcome to you. Also, I want to welcome uh, past District Governor uh, Leslie, from, who is in, from Piaco, but yet from Florida. Welcome to our virtual meeting. And it has been a great time. So...